All right, let's go. So the way this is going to work is I have a little, uh, give me 15, 20 minutes, kind of get, get it started. Uh, a little about my journey getting into AI, what I've been learning. I'm going to hand it off to Nikki because this is your this is your role right now is just teaching and and what's your goal to how many people you want to teach? One AI million to? people. One, okay, lofty goal, but he, he's doing it because every day <laughs> he's training, and he just happened to be in town, and he offered to be like, hey, I'm going to come teach us to your audience. So happily, you know, taking him up on his offer. So. I'll do the very beginning. He's going to wrap it up. Any questions, comments, uh, I'll do my best to hit them towards the end. Sound good, guys? Let's get started. Dun, dun, dun. Bear with me while I get the slides set up. Dun, dun, dun. Chrome. All right, we are there. So we are going to be talking uh, exploring AI. Uh, this is you know learning and growing together. This is one of those things where again it's just very palatable. We're not going to be going like really really in depth. I just want people to kind of let the guard down, <laughs> just and, and just just listen, kind of let it wash over you a little bit of what is happening now, what's already here, and kind of what's coming down uh, in the future. So I really appreciate you guys jumping on here. Really my goal on this is just, and this is kind of your line, I stole this from you. You're gonna know more about AI after this presentation than like 99% of the population. Uh, again, I commend you just for the fact that you're on here. Uh, a lot of people, they, hear they do this when it comes to AI, they're like, whatever, I'll do with it later. It's here now. <laughs> you, you gotta start getting educated on it. Couple of things here, when, again, my whole stance is just, just being AI literate uh you know it's a couple of quotes here you know ai literacy it's, it's not a luxury it's it's a necessity now for the future workforce uh this one from uh, microsoft ai is transforming every industry and to stay relevant you need to be literate and uh, everyone's favorite mark cuban uh ai you know won't take a job but someone who knows how to use it will <laughs> and i'm not here to be like oh the robots are coming we're all doomed it's going to take everyone's job but you need to know what is coming down the pipeline. And I think just the fact that you're here and being willing to start learning about AI speaks volumes. And it's actually going to put you ahead of the guy. Well, not this guy, but the guy next to you that isn't learning this stuff. I put this on here because this I, I found this video that, and we're not going to play this video. It's not the purpose of this, but take a screenshot, write this down, watch this later on. Uh, it, it spoke to me, and it's just it's called uh, generative AI in a nutshell, and it's like I don't know, like a eighteen yeah eighteen minute video. Draws pretty pictures, just kind of draws out the whole thing of kind of how it started, how it, the evolution of AI. It's been around for a lot longer than you think, guys. It's just now with the compute power, we're able to use it, frankly. And I just watched this video, and for in eighteen minutes, it really helped solidify my understanding of what generative AI uh, really is. So just a little tip there. Again, you can write that down, take a screenshot, watch that later. And I keep hearing this about uh, kind of the, the AI tsunami. So I, I put this on, on here, not to scare you, but like I was saying, it's, I shouldn't say it's coming. It's, it's already here, <laughs> ready or not. And it's a matter of, are you going to be learning about it? kind of riding that AI wave, or are you the ones that are kind of sticking your head in the sand and being like, it's not going to affect me. I don't need to learn about it. All's good because you're going to get wiped out. Um, so it's just a matter of learning, being open to it, playing. That's going to be the key. You're going to hear me <laughs> talk about this. And really, it's, it's so funny. Again, being, being the self-storage guy and all that, that's, that's such my zone. But man, this is going to affect everybody. And I, I just want to put this on here to kind of put a little more context to it of this is like, you know, it's a revolution. I mean, think of fire was invented and the wheel was invented and the printing press and the steam engine, the internet. Those are just huge, huge events that just catapulted society in a whole nother realm. 
you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> when it comes to AI, it's going to affect everything, guys. And if you haven't caught on all these all these images, yeah, they're all AI generated. So all fun. This is a, an important date, uh, November 30th, 2022. That's the, man, if you're on here, you probably heard of chat GPT. Uh, that's when uh, that came out. And I don't know, I don't know what it was. Um, probably like a week before it was going to come out. I, I got wind of it. I don't even know how. I just got wind of it. This chat GPT thing was coming out. I don't know what it was. It's something spoke to me. Uh, I was just like, you need to be aware of what, what's going on, what this is. You got to check this. You got to check this out. And so, yeah, day it came out, I was I was on it. Um, if you're my self-storage friends, you're probably aware of I was texting you and emailing you going, hey, check this out. And I was just doing parlor tricks, you know, just having to write a short story for me or, or go through a database or just talking to it, frankly and just blew my mind. So that's what started this passion for AI. Just real quick, hopefully I'm not stepping on any of your toes if it's in your slide, but I just wanted to kind of talk real briefly about, man, the chat GPT, you know, the, the sprint to 1 million users. We've never seen it, anything like this, that's got you know, this much adoption this quickly. I'm just gonna give you one, you know, Netflix took them three and a half years to get to a million users. ChatGPT, five days, five days. That's that's it's. I don't know, can't wrap my mind around it. What is it now? Do you, do you even know what the stat is right now? How many users? It's uh, still less than one percent. Is it really? Even, even just the USA. So it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Um, it, so when you say that you'll learn, know more about ChatGPT than ninety nine percent of people, it's, yeah, it's pretty easy to do so because. <laughs> you know, that's that's what's that's going okay. on right now. They just <laughs> well, again, the fact that you're on here, yeah, you're ahead of the game, guys. It's awesome. And kind of part of my journey, in fact, you just saw this while I was on. I was just playing on TikTok, <laughs> as we do, mindless scrolling towards the end of the night, just kind of whatever. This dude popped up, Kyle uh, Kyle Shannon popped up, and he was talking about AI. I'm like, what? And he does three hour lives every day. For a year straight, I think he's missed like seven days total. Just talking about AI, he just just jamming. You know, he shares a screen. He's just playing, and that was a key for me um, of watching what he was doing, what they were going through. And he created this company, this uh, community called AI Salon. I put that on there if you want to check it out. It's a mighty networks, totally free. AI Salon MN Co. Check that out. Real briefly, just want to go over this with you. Because again, this is kind of how I frame everything when it comes to AI. Just play. <laughs> Put the guard down. There's no judgment. You can't screw it up. Just play with these tools. Try to solve a problem. Um, I'll get into this here in a second, but I, I try to think of being AI native. If something comes up, there's a problem. The very first thing I, I think of, and it's kind of like a muscle. You just kind of have to keep using it. But the first thing I think of is, can I use AI for this? Can AI assist me with this? Can this be my study buddy? Something just to bounce an idea off of. I use AI. And nine times out of 10, it's ChatGPT. That's kind of like my, <laughs> that's my anchor for a lot of this stuff. And then share. That's what we're doing right now. We're learning as we're going. We're sharing what we're learning. The more that you share with what this is, it's going to get more awareness. And frankly, selfishly, what I'm doing this for is <laughs> because I'm sharing it, I actually learn more. I, I, le I learn by sharing. So, which you guys have seen that over the years of doing the, the storage content that I do. And then, yeah, I started sharing this. And yeah, I got contacted by Modern Storage Media. They're like, hey, you want, you're the AI guy. I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I pretend I am. I, I'm, I'm playing, I'm learning. Like, good enough for us. So, I write a monthly article <laughs> in the Modern Storage Media for AI. Again, it's just kind of just sharing talking about it just bringing awareness okay and again just part of trying to learn actually got it right there got the hard copy uh just learning and you'll start seeing more, the fact that you're on here you're going to start hearing ai ai just be more aware of it read the articles watch the youtube videos be on these kind of presentations that's what it's all about and how i've used it Real briefly, because how I've been using it just in my in my little storage world 
is I run all the Google business profiles for uh, all my clients. This is how I started. I started just generating images in ChatGPT, creating the, the image updates. Kind of cool. I didn't see anybody else really doing that. Normally they're just taking a picture of their facilities. And I don't know about you, I can only see a storage door in so many different angles to make it cool. It doesn't work. So I started using these kind of photos and man, I started standing out. It was fun. And I didn't really see many other people uh, utilizing that. So I like the heart one. You like that one? Yeah. It's trying to mix it up. I mean, again, it's storage. So you got your cameras, you got your moving trucks, but more things you can kind of intermix with uh, other things and sprinkle in storage, the better. It makes it fun. And then I'm just now, which I'm going to have to ask you about this later on, but just now I'm starting to, to learn how to run some competition analysis. Uh, you know, scraping their website and looking at what the other people are, are doing online for their pricing. Having to do that automatically, putting in a spreadsheet for me automatically with my pricing. I can quickly compare and be like, how do I stock up in my three mile radius? Again, these tools are here now <laughs> that you can start using. And again, I'll, I'll probably do a demo on this stuff when I have it a little more ironed out. I'm still in the still in the play phase of that, not the, not the, the sharing phase, but once I get that ironed out, I'll definitely share that with you. And this is another thing. This, you may have seen a video I've done in the past, and maybe towards the end, if I got time, I'll, I'll do a demo of this, but customer service, uh, we were talking about that with uh, call centers. He's big on doing the call center stuff. Man, I, I, I've just been using, it's called Pi. Uh, it's just an app called Pi, and that's that's one I pick because it's a little more conversational, and it's just a, you know, just, just an app on the phone. Actually, got got two minutes, and I, I'll I'll put you on. I wasn't planning on doing this, but why not? All right, this is Pi, just a nap. Let's just do it real quick here. Hey, Pi, how's it going today? Hey there, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. My circuits are all fired up and ready to assist you with whatever you need. How's your day going so far? All good. Hey, just real quick, I'm doing a presentation right now, uh, live. So you are live. And I want to see if you can role play real quick and have you be a self storage manager. I'm going to be a customer calling you and see if you can sell me a unit. All right. Sounds like fun. I'm ready to step into the role of the self storage manager. Consider me fully prepared to handle your call and help you find the perfect storage solution. So let's begin. How can I assist you today, customer? No, come on, let's start from the beginning. Ready? Ring, ring. So, ring, 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 ring. Hello, thank you for calling Acme Self Storage. This is Pi, your personal storage manager. How can I help you today? Uh, yeah, I'm just calling to see if I can get a storage unit. Absolutely. We have a variety of storage units available to suit your needs. Could you, you tell me a bit more about what you're looking to store and for how long? That way I can recommend the best unit size and type for you. Um, I don't know, about a three bedroom house. Uh, I got a couch. It's kind of funky. It's uh, probably the biggest item. And I don't know, like 20 boxes. All right, with a couch and about 20 boxes, I'd recommend our 10 x 10 unit. It's a popular size and should give you plenty of room for your items. We also offer climate controlled units if you're storing any temperature sensitive item. Would you prefer a climate controlled unit or a standard one? Uh, just a standard drive up, that's cool. Perfect, a standard drive up unit will work great for your needs. Now let's talk about rental terms. We offer both month to month and long term options. With your estimate of about 20 boxes and a couch, do you think you'll need the unit for more than a few months? Nope, just uh, probably three months max. Uh, what's the price on it? For a 10 by 10 standard drive up unit, the monthly rental rate is typically around $95. If you're planning to rent for three months, your total cost would be approximately to $85. <laughs> Plus, we offer a special promotion for new customers. Your first month's rent is only 
<laughs> she right. personality. Yeah, she's kind of got the valley girl thing going. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea, okay, guys? That's all I wanted to show that for. It's and I've done it a few times where I've gone through the whole process of practically renting a unit. And if, if you've seen me online, I've done the secret shoppers in the past where I'm calling, you know, managers out of the blue and just seeing how they do. Seriously, going through that presentation, I didn't do any sort of prep. You, you, you saw it live. Pretty dang good. And so, yeah, I'm definitely looking at utilizing this kind of a function, both in the near future when it comes to uh, customer service bots. I want to put this on here because this is just, this is me sometimes, pretty much every day. Kind of feels like AI overwhelm. I mean, every day, especially when you get start getting plugged into it, and I'm in on the newsletters, all that kind of stuff. Every day, it's it's something new, and the thing that I'm working on now it might be outdated tomorrow. It it gets it gets a little nutty. So it, it is weird. It is real. The AI overwhelm. But like I said earlier, kind of ChatGPT is kind of my home. <laughs> it's my base, and then I have a, I sprinkle a few other AI uh, applications around that. I just kind of find the tools that I like, and I kind of just frankly, I kind of just stick with it. Um, so again, you don't have to worry about trying to be the latest and greatest and being on doing finger on the pulse of everything. Play with it. You'll start finding the tools that you like and just kind of stick with those. So again, I just want to put in here, you know, hey guys moving fast, just stay up to date. It's going to feel overwhelming, but just, just play with the tools. It not only demystifies the technology, but it also is it, it's going to pave a way to your AI literacy. So that's the point. That's why you're here, right? And again, it's going to go back to being coming AI native. Uh, as you'll see with Nikki when he starts demonstrating some of these tools, some of these issues are going to come up, in, not just in storage or just in your work, but in your everyday life. <laughs> Things are going to come up. You're like, oh, I wonder if I could try that tool out. And just kind of having that mentality of just trying to become AI first in a lot of different scenarios. And that brings me to kind of my journey, brings me to Nikki. Just a, a, a few weeks ago, uh, wasn't, yeah, <laughs> probably about 30 days ago is when I even found out about it, but two weeks ago is when this happened. And uh, I saw a uh, we were doing a, called Utah Tech Week here in Utah, where they had just workshops and presentations all throughout the valley. Well, I went to one of them, and it was, it was Nikki's, and did a, it was like three hour kind of thing. Yeah, something like that. And I was like, eh, this is awesome. This kind of blew me away. And then he did a, a three-day AI boot camp. So if you see on here, very chill, relaxed, love this atmosphere. We, we're in a house, you know, under 10 of us that were there. And for three straight, day, three, three straight days, I can get that word out, we just dove in <laughs> to anything and everything AI. Um, so what we're going to go over today is this kind of this Skim in the surface of what kind of we went over, but hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll uh, expand your mind when it comes to this. So with that, my portion is kind of done. I want to hand this off to the pro here when he's going over his presentation. So give me a moment. Let me get his slides lined up. Dun, dun, dun. We're back. Just making sure we're good there. Cool. All right. Give me one second. Present. Look at my cheat sheet. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Play, play from the start. Thanks so you much, Jim. Good. I'm gonna hand you off. I'm gonna go sit down for a second. And watch yeah, appreciate, appreciate being able to be here today. So uh, today, I want to make it so that by the end of this presentation, you'll know more about AI than 99% of the people. But as we said earlier, 99% of the people aren't even on ChatGPT, which I just mentioned now because it's the best AI model today. But it might not be in a couple of weeks, but probably will still be. I'm going to talk to you about all sorts of use cases, AI for marketing, AI for HR, AI for lead generation, and being your AI assistant. And also, I hope it inspires a lot of things in your business, your ventures, and also even in your personal life about all the things that are possible. When I talk to entrepreneurs, business owners, business leaders, and executives, they're always excited about the creativity and innovation that could come out of AI. When I talk to a group of attorneys and I talk to people that are HR professionals, they might be a little bit more, more concerned and scared about the possibilities because they don't know exactly how the world's going to change. 
so much is happening. So much is being remodeled in terms of the world and how an organization should be run. And I think that what you're going to see is that there's two parts of life. There's life before this workshop and there's life after this workshop. I'm going to tell you a little about my goal. I'm a part of this group called the Vajal Institute. And I create a bunch of slides. Much of it was inspired from my work with the Vajal Institute. And you can get access to this follow along with me with a lot of materials that we're covering just by using this QR code or going to this site here. And this will allow you to learn a little bit more about what we're doing in more detail. I even include some videos so you can actually learn how to make your own AI bot. But right now we're a group of 200 leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and we basically just teach AI all over the world. So far we've taught tens of thousands of people just in the last quarter and we now have more tutor trainers, but we're probably going to double that up next week when I'm doing a trainer trainer program in New York. And I'm very, very excited about all the possibilities. In fact, if you have a nonprofit and you want us to speak to your organization for free, completely free, it's something that we do. I myself, um, I've been an entrepreneur for quite a while. I spent most of the last couple of decades building a personal growth and education platform from zero to over a hundred million in revenue. And it was a global business that I exited from five years ago. Um, I also have traveled to almost 150 countries now. Uh, one of the things I did is I went to all these temples for the church I'm a member of, and I turned, turned this into an AI mosaic of me standing in front of all these different temples. And uh, I think it's pretty great. But I come from a background of both, both the psychology and uh, business and law side of things, but now I'm presently a PhD student in IT with an emphasis on AI. And I'm going to take a culmination of all my different experiences and combine it together. So members of my church, I think, have said it best that AI is something that can unlock possibilities, but don't just rely on AI to answer all your questions because it still requires a lot of human feedback. It's not a sentient being. It requires you to have agency, to have choice, and I think that if you, if you use AI to help solve your questions that you need to make the strategic decisions that will run your business, I think that's the best way to do so. In addition to that, it will do things for you. AI models will allow you to actually contact your customers, do marketing, automations, anything that has 10,000 or more data points usually is something that you probably can automate and save yourself a lot of time. In addition to that, Developing a strategic roadmap of what's possible is something that I also want you to think about. Or if you think about, while you're watching this presentation, three things. I want you to think about what is a task that if you were to automate, it would just save you so much time. It would be a number one priority for you. Think about the process to build that task. Step by step, what happens to happen in that task to make it complete. And third, think about what software tools you have in that task. And when you do that, you will now think about what you can automate and where AI could be a possible feature to help accelerate that process. And I'll show you a little bit about what that is today. I won't have time to go very, very deep, but I'll show you what is possible. In our tech startup house, we had 10 entrepreneurs live in my 10 bedroom house in Las Vegas with the goal of going from just an idea to having clients. And 100% of the people that were participating in this age 18 to 55 were able to go from just an idea to actually getting clients, making revenue. One had over a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, half over 10,000, the rest over 1,000. Now to lead the charge, I decided that I wanted to lead by example. So I created this company, Real AI Dynamics. This was born out of my tech um, venture studio trellis. If you go to trellis.com, You'll notice that the entire website was built in AI. Every picture, every word, everything about it is AI generated. But the same thing has to happen for people to complete a 30-day challenge to rapidly iterate. They had tasks like write a book that was 100 pages or more. Develop a full-scale website advertising your products, features, and benefits. In fact, write 40 pages of features and benefits and a sales letter. Have a website that has this hosted, a product page. Any one of these tasks could be a task list of things you do in just one day that each and of themselves could take 30 days to complete. But with AI, these impossible tasks, 
these mission impossibles, as I call them, because they're not things that are typically impossible. They're impossible to people who don't think they're possible, but they totally are something that you can do. In fact, we had people doing that. We had people that would accomplish over 100 of these 150 tasks in this 30 days. And now they're in a program called Scale Up House. We're now trying to scale up their house so that they have gone from zero to one. It's a totally different game to go from that to one to a million. And then we're going to have Systems House this summer where you go from a million to 10 million as like the goal, stretch goal, stretch goal, not required, but you get learned and we have, we have mentoring where you learn and every single week you have mentors, CEOs that know a little bit about AI, but they know a ton about entrepreneurship and business. And I myself doing a, a JD MBA and having built approximately 80 businesses right now and diverse businesses, primarily in education and managing influencers, but I've done everything from a pool cleaning company to a beverage and food company to convention services, non-new visual equipment. So I'm going to show you how easy it is using VentureKit.ai, a Silicon Valley company, actually where I'm going tonight because tomorrow I'm going to a tech startup house created by the founder of Google. This is an idea of creating a storage company. We're going to change this from lawyers who are talking earlier today to best storage management. And we're going to change the name from the law firm. I was doing a presentation for it earlier today to three mile storage management. And I just want to show you how easy it is to create a comprehensive business plan for your storage company. And look, instantly created. Now we were talking a little bit earlier about how Jim wanted to see how you do more competitive analysis. This thing here will actually scour the, scour the internet and do SWOT analysis for you. You can do a financials based upon its research and numbers, It'll estimate the total market value. Now you can unlock different modules by just, you, you get on your subscription, a certain amount of things you can unlock. You just click the modules you wanna unlock, everything from five-year plans, sales and marketing plans, operational plans, implementation plans, it gives you viability analysis. So this is you have 85 out of 100, which is pretty strong. Well, if you have somebody that organizes this, telling you what your problems, your solution, how you can focus on your customer needs, I guess this is great. Here we're saying your, your strength is you're in a top-notch storage management service company, an opportunity to expand the adjacent markets, there's some threats, economic downturn, um, you know, we said some weaknesses, potential vulnerabilities, the economic fluctuations. Um, but you could also use ChatGPT and many other AI services in combination with this to create a pitch deck. And we'll show how you create a pitch deck just as fast as we create a full business plan here that you could download, share with people. You could create websites that are shareable with people that you're interested in talking this, talking to with about this. Now we're going to talk a little bit about ethical frameworks. So when you're using AI, you want to make sure you're developing systems that have ethical values. In fact, I did it, I did a whole presentation at Wharton School of Business just a couple of weeks ago about how you could use leadership based on honesty, integrity, equity, respect, dignity, and compassion into your business. In fact, you could do something called a master prompt and have a team account. So everyone in your company have accounts that talk a certain way, have certain ideas, your HR um, department or HR professionals can upload custom instructions so that anything that you run through uh, um, prompts that create a certain kind of output goes through something called a master prompt. This allows you to have uniformity throughout your whole organization behind what you want to have talked about and also about the knowledge base of what it already knows, but including how it talks to people. If you want a professional tone versus a, a casual and, and fun and playful tone, this is something that you can do. Now, I'm curious who here put in the chat if you're using ChatGPT. I myself have been using ChatGPT even before Jim mentioned its birthday in November of 2022. I've used it a couple of years before that. I got access because um, I was part of their alpha program where a member of their board of directors gave access to a member of the board of directors of a company I was on the board of. And they're doing psychological research about what you could do with ChatGPT. And I thought it was so amazing. I was telling everyone that it was the closest thing that I saw talking to God through a computer. <laughs> now, it's a little bit different than that, as we learn. ChatGPT is actually really just a prediction tool. It's not sentient. There's no secret algorithms. There's no nefarious databases that it has access to. But the accuracy of the predictions of what you want to do is so powerful. I was literally just building an AI missionary that was so powerful. In fact, you can see it in the Utah Tech Week presentation that Jim attended 
which I'll give access to you all as a gift later on. Now, if you're using less than 450 words in your prompt, you're typically using it wrong because you're using generic and often useless answers if you're using it throughout your enterprise on a regular basis. I'm not saying that I only do that. I have total conversations. In fact, today, you're going to see most of our prompts are not 450 words prompts because we want this to not be a typing class. We want this to be an educational program. And what you'll see is that a 450 plus word prompt could be used to do everything from very sophisticated data analytics to very sophisticated marketing plans. Now to see what 450 words looks like exactly, this is what it looks like. Here you provide first their persona. So the persona here is that you're an esteemed expert in AI with a PhD from Stanford in computer science, which also could be useful if you want to develop code. And ChatGPT could actually use Code Interpreter and literally develop code for your websites or anything else. Next is the instructions, which is we provide analysis on cutting edge research. And we go step by step through other things that we want to do. And we conclude with please proceed with your data in context and then you input it here. And you can literally just copy and paste Word documents, PDFs, Excel files, images, anything, and literally just put it straight in the ChatGPT. If you're using the backend system of ChatGPT, which is called the Playground, you can literally automate that whole process, connect it to your personal databases, your data, so that if you want to predict different analysis, uh, statistical regression analysis, say on, oh, this is, our sales, this is how much our warehouse is, this is our inventory, this is our, our campaigns, these are our people. Please give us recommendations on how we should do pricing, how we can improve our marketing, how we can improve anything, doing all sorts of graphical outlines and pie graphs and charts. It could do that, but you got to tell it what to do, and you have to do it in very good detail. And that's where advanced prompting comes in. This is a very advanced prompt. A prompt like this, we've seen sell for $100,000 because of how valuable it was to the enterprise that purchased it, who's now using it as part of an enterprise-grade solution that does automations. Other people use prompt engineers. So if you went to my QR code and you have access now to the follow-alongs, you could see that if you go to tinyurl.com forward slash raid prompt engineer or tinyurl.com forward slash prompt perfectionist, you get access to these two tools. The first one is a prompt engineer that I personally created that allows you to type in any kind of basic prompt. It could be a sentence or what have you, and it will refine it. It'll create the persona. It'll create the instructions. It'll create the context. And then you just copy and paste it from your prompt engineer window into a new window in ChatGPT, and you'll get a way higher quality prompt or output from that prompt. And Prompt Perfectionist does something similar, but instead of giving you the prompt itself, it will actually develop the strategy with you and ask you questions. I always say the best thing you can get when you are raising money or are talking to, say, an angel group. So I was on the board of the Tech Coast Angels, which is the largest angel group in the West Coast. And the best thing you get isn't even the 50, 100, quarter million dollars you might get from the angel group. It actually is the questions that they ask you to help refine your questions, asking you about your minimal viable product. What, what is the um, goal and how are you going to obtain that goal? What is, what, is, what is the things that are getting in the way of you hitting the goals that you want, where the challenge is getting in the way? And I think that is something that you can do. Now, a prompt library like this is what the Vajal Institute put together. So out of all these really brilliant global leaders, most of them rank 5,000 CEOs, if not Fortune 100 CEOs, we all put together this library of awesome videos, certifications, interviews, and a library where you could actually see what these prompts look like. Now we're an alpha program. You can't really subscribe just by going through the homepage, but if you go to this URL here, you can actually get access to a free alpha account and you can actually see what these 450 plus word prompts look like. Play with them. Everything from time management solutions, staying accountable to stuff that deals with your business and use cases for marketing, sales, finance, or supply chain, fine, and, and anything else, anything you could possibly think about. Now, I'm going to show you an example of what prompting looks like on ChatGPT 3.5. It's going to be very, very fast. 
And I'm going to show you an example of hiring, recruiting. So as you can see here, I'm going to copy and paste a prompt into the chat box. I mean, ChatGPT is literally just a chat bot. It says you're a recruiting expert. We want to hire people for our position in this re recruiting. This, this, this is a job posting that's being created here. It's asking for qualifications. It's, it's just showing benefits. It says how you can join the company, apply. Now we're saying we want to create an evaluation matrix in the form of a table. We can see a one to five ratio. I think this is great. This is something that you often see in universities to try to determine what's poor versus what's excellent. Next thing we're doing is we're creating an interview panel. So we're creating a hypothetical panel. We can actually use your real data, but it's asking interview questions from the standpoint of a scientist, researcher, a manager. Um, and you can do this from the standpoint of a CEO for strategic questions, HR managers asking about your motivations, experience. Now we're creating a way that these interviewers could also grade on their own chart. They could use this and check box, box off, add feedback, comments. And now we're going to say that we got an application. So I'm really just going to my LinkedIn page and I'm just going to say, thanks, we received an application, copy and paste it. We can do this with a resume too. But it says that I have a broad range of experience, but I don't have pharmaceutical experience. Pros and cons, recommendations is that we should probably um, do an interview, but ask about those things that we're questioning about. So let's write a letter to me. So here it's instantly writing a letter and it's saying, hey, we'd love to learn more about your background or certain things that we had questions upon about, about your research experience. This is something that I've automated. Everything we've done here, I literally wanted to prove how easy it was to do that I got a 13 year old kid as an intern who literally created all this with AI into an automated solution where you just say, I want to hire for this position and it runs through this whole process. In fact, we built this for a company in Dubai that gets 500 applications a day on Indeed and they don't look at any of them because they don't have time to review them all. And with AI, we can sort it given the applicant tracking software score. And then based on only hiring people with a nine or a 10, we could set up automated interviews using Calendly and Google Calendar, and then you could interview these people and just choose the 50 people you need to hire for your company. Now, that's that's a lot. Now, let's say some of you want to write a book. I'm going to show you in five minutes how you can create your own book as a potential promotional material for getting people to subscribe to your newsletter or even just as a gift that you could give to anyone who rents a storage unit. So today we're learning how to use designer to create a book. You can see I chose a, a niche, self storage management, English. The theme is business. And I could choose a sub niche, which said choose climate control and self storage management. And the audience is self storage management companies. And with the AI word genie of designers, I'm going to create some titles for the book. I'm going to call it The Ultimate Handbook client control self-storage management companies. And as I go next, it's really just a self-guided, very simple self-explanatory tour. You can see now I have chapters from my book and it's now generating the book. It starts off with uh, some pretty common things you see in a book, which was an introduction section. And now you can see that it's explaining some of the value of using self-storage and it's literally generating the book right in front of us. Content looks pretty strong. For example, here it says one of the key benefits of proper self storage unit is prevention of mold, mildew, and pests. That's true. Now, other things you can notice about this is that designer is designer.io for anyone else who wants to use this service. If you wanted to upgrade, you could upgrade to add additional features, but one of the things I like about this is that it's very, very cheap. I think the present price is about $30. I've been uh, designing a lot of books on designer. It looks like this. You can see the, the pricing model has some standard plans. This is the standard plan right now. It's $29 one user. It could create from a hundred different templates. If I pay a little bit more, you have 300 different templates. And notice there's a free trial. Cool thing is the page numbers match the table of contents. That usually takes a lot of time. And you also import from web, Microsoft Office products like Word, Google Docs. And you can also 
and export to Kindle, iBooks, EPUB, you can clone your product. You have a footbook generator for any PDF you want to pay a little bit more, $49. I initially had the $99 version because you can also add a ton of images, pictures, and you export this to any website, which is quite great. You can see right now, it's just finished about chapter four of this book. And what you do is you start off with a certain amount of credits. Credits are basically a way you can say tokens. And in the AI world, tokens could be like a word like how, or it could also be a phrase like how old are, or how old are you? And the amount of credits is not exactly tokens here, but we will see that in things like ChatGPT or OpenAI, and you can see how many credits I've used. You get a certain amount per month on a basic plan, you get about 100,000 tokens. Now, if I go back here, you can see that also has integrations with your Facebook group and all sorts of things, but let's click on designer main site. And if I click on login and I can see some drafts, you can see that I have my draft being generated by Word Genie right now. You can also see a bunch of other books. And the cool thing is you can make books for pretty much any kind of topic and you can edit it, you can upload your own Word document, you can upload your own pictures, you can download it as a PDF, send it to friends. If you want to publish it, you can. Let's see where you are now. Final thoughts on the future self stores. So that was pretty fast. We're pretty much done. Now we just need to choose a template. And you can see we have all sorts of templates for covers to choose from. And we'll see if we can find one that we like. I kind of like this one. So I'm going to choose this one. But before I do that, I just want to show you there's a bunch of other ones down below. And actually, this one's actually, I like this one even better. We'll choose this one. And now it's loading the content into the template. And here we go. Now, you notice that you need to edit the title. So we could just do that. We could call it self, well, we call it anything. Um, but, you know, I, I'm starting to write the title. I just could edit it. Notice it has my name, has a table of contents. Um, it has the book, chapter one, pretty good content. And you can see if we scroll down, it's all very, very organized. So that's pretty great. Uh, very, very simple tool. And I think that most people are mind blown about how fast you can create content and books and educational content on a regular basis. Some of you might even want to have apps that your clients can log into on your website, on your tablet, on your mobile, but you don't have the tech team and you don't know even how to design it. So I'm gonna show you how you could do that with AI for your storage companies. So one of the things that I'm using right now is UI Zard. And I just put in this prompt here, design a mobile app for a cell storage company that has these features, talking about um, things like an account management system, unit availability, access control, notification system, a digital inventory management system. And it's asking, so is this what you want? You know, real time displays of availability size, et cetera. Yeah. How did I create this? Well, I went to ChatGPT and went to my prompt engineer and I copied and pasted all that stuff into UIZard. I wanted to, you know, kind of have, you know, something that I could build off of. I used ChatGPT to kind of refine what I use for other tools. I kind of go back and forth because it's such an easy tool. It's literally just a chat bot. I think it's brilliant that an AI chatbot is able to help you with pretty much every other AI tool and everything else you could just integrate with. So we were doing one UI Zard and use Galileo. I wanted to compare the two. But for first, I wanted to show you how simple it was to create this. I said, create features for a mobile app for a self-storage company. And that's all it did. And I just built upon that by putting that into my prompt engineer to create a simple prompt. Now, let's zoom in. This is now done. We now have designs that be downloaded into Figma for your IT team or just as screenshots or images, however you want to share it. You have a login system, unit availability, unit details, storage tips and advice that you could give to your clients. We have a dashboard analysis of your units, 
You select your units, you add it to your shopping cart with other bonuses, values, and upsells. And then it gives you information about what you've selected and what you're managing. I think that's a pretty good app that you can have for your business. We actually build these kind of apps for companies as well. And we also now have another thing to compare it to. If you don't like that design, we use other service. And it's like, now we have a name, email, capture. We have a, we, and that allows us to also have, to have a login with a password, email system. Now you have, you know, some of this content needs to be edited. It, it wasn't as clean as the other one, but sometimes this service does better than the others and vice versa. You just got to kind of just tinker with it. I think this is also another good example. Um, you know, we had a, a law firm that I was working with and I wanted to generate a website. So I said, you know, I literally was at this law firm about an hour ago and I created this for them where we wanted to build a website, PowerPoint presentation and PDF all at the same time. And literally just said, create this um, presentation or website for this IP law firm. And now it's literally building it right in front of our eyes. This is pretty cool. This is not necessarily a multi-page site like Hoku's can do, H-O-C-O-O-S, but it's developing content that I can literally take that link that is in the URL um, in the browser book window that you could just take that and literally just send it to people. I can also create a tiny URL on tinyurl.com and send it to people. It, and this is totally editable. The cool thing about this is as you click on it and edit the words, it instantly publishes in real time the new website. AI images are being generated. You can see that little star, that's kind of like the uniform symbol for AI, AI generated images. I think that most AI images are being tagged so that we can know whether it's AI generated or not. Here you can see there's a contact page button. Can I build that as a presentation? This one is a full website that you can click on links and go to the contact page of your site and stuff like that. And uh, the images are pretty good. And notice that each of these were created in like one minute schedule consultation, and we could integrate this with the scheduling software or pretty much anything with no code solutions. It didn't require any code, didn't require years at a design studio to build this. We were just able to build it just based upon speaking into existence what we wanted with our keyboard. Any one of these tasks that we talked about would probably take months. We finished building a website a mobile app, um, a strategic plan, SWOT analysis, market analysis, all, all sorts of things in 15 minutes, even hiring people, which we could have scanned through thousands and thousands of resumes and just got us to the 50 we wanted to interview and set those appointments in 15 minutes. Now, if we multiply 15 minutes by 10, that's 150 minutes, which is two and a half hours. If we take that two and a half hours, multiply that by 10 again, that's 25 hours, which is typically two and a half hour work days or two, two, two and a half work days. Now, two and a half work days, if we're going to do everything we just talked about is a 100x productivity. Let's say it took you a week. Let's say you have like an enterprise grade team. I can't imagine you do, but let's say you did everything we just talked about this before AI. And you finish everything we just hired. You know, hired 50 people, went through thousands of resumes, built a website, design, and also um, presentations and all sorts of other things. And we took a month. That's 800x productivity. Let's say that it would typically take you three months. I mean, for most people, honestly, it would take years or just never get done. But if it was three months to do all this, that's 2,400x productivity. There has never been technological development before AI that allowed you at this price point, also known as free, that has given this much productivity. Now, tools like Designer, where you had to write a book that cost $30, and ChatGPT now is no longer completely free if you use your 4.0 edition. That's $25 for your team. Use Galileo and UI's already each other like $20 each for a whole month, but they all have free trials. And as a result of that, this is truly phenomenal. Imagine what you could do 
if you had 2400 x productivity in your lead generation for your advertising campaigns, in your HR, in your sales process and answering phone calls, in your pipeline for marketing, in your finance and budgeting and strategic decision making, and even just automating the processes of everything we're just talking about. That is the true potential of what AI is in the present day. I can't even imagine what's going to be impossible a week from now or two weeks from now. But if I could, it would just exist because that's how fast we can create things. We just think it, we write it down or just speak it into existence. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like, even without a keyboard. And you literally can create AI models and tools and actually make all this happen. Some people are concerned about this and they don't want to do it themselves. That's why we, that's why we exist. We walk people hand by hand on how to do this. We also do it for our companies. But this is unprecedented level productivity. In fact, we're at the point where we're literally hiring almost every single person that applies to work for us. I would say we, well over 90% of the people that apply for work, for work for us because if we could train someone on AI, then they could do anything. And my main goal is not just being an AI educator to launch my own micro SaaS businesses. Now, when you're thinking about AI, another thing you want to consider is bias. AI models, just like humans, can have bias. And of course, we do our best to remove bias. In fact, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, is literally hiring bias removal experts that have PhDs that are trying to remove bias to create fairness for hiring or to add principles that are good as opposed to bad because anything this powerful can be used for good or bad. A lot of people are afraid, when, especially when I show how you can really take the likeness of myself and make it into an AI because they're afraid of how this could be used to be deep faked for other people that are public figures. But there's laws that protect people against these kinds of things that have actually been proven in court to cause pretty severe consequences. And if you look at history, bias has always existed. And at least you have a model where you are training it to remove bias. And that's why I think you see things like Channel One News where you can actually choose AI news reporters that have been trained to remove bias. Now, there are some tools, like I'm gonna show you a tool called Gemini by Google. And they actually had their image generation turned off because their bias did not allow you to create famous historical characters at, uh, without them being minorities, but it does great use cases. So I wanna show you what's possible with AI today with their video here. And it's not as real time today, but it's great to show what's possible. All right, testing Gemini. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. I, you... oh, whoops, sorry. I'm gonna go back to the video, sorry about that. Let me go forward a little bit, the duck video. With no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. 
In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high level tone. Oh, okay. The duck is in the middle of the ocean. There is no land nearby for the duck to rest or find food. It is unlikely to find ducks here naturally. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue one. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. Clue two. This country loves football and has won the most men's World Cups in football history. Hmm. You were trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth, a dog. Sweet. The coin should be under the right hand. Mm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. <laughs> Smart choice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No, the correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun? The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Oh, I love that. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? All right, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. Change it up with some beachy vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice. What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. But don't worry, the cat is a natural athlete and it will be back up there in no time. Okay, I've got one more for you. Describe the drawing I made. It is a simple line drawing of the constellation Gemini. You did a good job of capturing the beauty of Gemini. Nice, that's it. So what did we see here? We saw image recognition. We saw data analysis. We saw decision making. We saw things like where you take a picture and you could literally describe what is in the picture and how you can manipulate that picture or other images into other things. Music generation. All these tools are available today for usage. For a lot of people who have never used AI before, you probably are looking at this and you're shocked. You're like, this can't be. This is this has got to be just a thing of the future. But this is something that 
I deal with on a daily basis. And so is everyone else in my team. And the cool thing is you're in that 1% now that could literally do any of these things. The typical organization is going to need to change with these kind of tools. So powerful. If your competition is using them, then you probably want to be using them or you're going to be a little bit behind. Also, you'll be able to generate a lot more leads, a lot more higher quality management in your team. If you're able to go from a company where an expert who typically has 15 years more of experience is at the top, kind of just being at the head of a pyramid where you have some managers operationally, maybe they have seven to 15 years experience and they're managing people that might have zero to seven years experience in your industry. Now, let's see what an AI and power organization looks like. Here, if AI is at the core, and it has to be top down, like everyone, not just outsourcing it to a chief technology officer or an external company. You have to understand what's going on. Let's say that you have a core team that's been optimized. In about three to five years, I believe this is what's going to take to have an organization where you have a lot more experts, a lot of people who understand how to do things strategically and operationally because they have the tools to optimize their processes and constantly make things better and be assured of the quality, reducing the error rates. You're going to have a lot more L1s, managers, and you're going to have a lot less L2s because those L2s, all they need is that education on AI and your processes, and you'll be good. See, when you want to develop a good AI process, you need very good processes. That way, the first person in your organization that you need to bring in to have a, your AI kind of integrated isn't a tech person. It's a process person to see your ideal processes versus what's actually happening. And to map that out so you understand how you're going to have AI automate a lot of these processes or add creative solutions. But good AI plus a good process is what makes a good AI process. If you're missing one of those two, you have bad AI or bad process. You're going to have a bad AI process. You're going to be automating the wrong thing. This is what AI is. This is where all the data comes from, the Internet basically goes over websites, blogs, books, videos, audios, all sorts of things. Maybe I'll even transcribe that stuff and put it, that data into a uniform thing. It goes through something called a transformer where that data is put into this thing called, um, is put into this thing called a vector database where basically you'll take words like how old am, are, I, is, whatever, and try to sort them in a certain order. But instead of just having those words, you're going to have these dimensions. It might be like numbers followed by commas, followed by more numbers, followed by more commas. And basically the AI model, its only goal is to do one thing, answer a simple question. What is the simple question that you're trying to determine when you're using an AI model? What is the next word? What is the next word that you want me to say after I say it, a word in my output? Or what is the next pixel for a video or image that you want me to go followed by the next appropriate one, followed by the next appropriate one? It's not like this genius, amazing, creative thing that could take liability and come up with its own solutions. All it's doing is it's a prediction tool. And that is why when Google had access to ChatGPT technology from Ilya Tsutskever, they said, we don't see the value in this. Go do your own thing. And he created OpenAI. That's, this model could be fine-tuned through interactions. In fact, OpenAI hires tons of people around the world just to play with the model in different cultures and to kind of find out what people want to have as an output. This is fine-tuning. And that's all AI is. It's a very simple prediction tool. In fact, Stanford and MIT have had access to this for the longest time. And when the Vajal Institute instructors came out there and said, hey, this is what we're using it for. They're like, no way. We could actually do data analytics and do images and hire people and do marketing campaigns and business plans, all this prediction tool. I thought it just like predicts like what you want the next word to be. But that's literally what people do as well. We predict what's next word. The only difference is that we have agency. We have the ability of creativity and we have control. And that's why ethically, humans will always be in control of the AI models. Now, 
Let's talk about servant leadership. So AI tools are there to serve us, to provide service for the greater good in all sorts of ways. AI tools could provide feedback, sentiment analysis, could optimize your resources. It could even help you with your Zoom meetings and recordings with clients, staff. It could keep you informed about all sorts of things going on in your business. One of the things that I like to show also is how it can even serve as a customer service representative. So let's say that I'm helping Jim's business and I'm an AI. He showed you an example with Pi, which I think is a great example. Let's say that I'm using ChatGPT, just ChatGPT, because ChatGPT has what's called an open API, which means we can open it up and connect it to anyone else that also has an open API, which includes Google, which includes transcription services, which includes your, your, your sheets, your documents, even your databases. This is pretty cool. But let's say I just take these words that you are a customer service representative, three mile storage management with over 20 years of experience with an expertise in answering questions related to the storage management business and customer service with a professional and empathetic tone, demonstrating respect and dignity for other people. When you're asked questions, please answer them. So you created a persona, customer service representative, created the tone of voice, professional but empathetic, and we created instructions for context. So we're going to ask questions. I want you to answer them. Now, we could have this entire thing transcribed. We could have it sent to our actual sales team, integrated with the CRM, integrated with the ERP. But let's see what this looks like and get the results. All right. So we type this into the phone and I'm going to push this headset button here. Hello, I'm trying to get a hold of three miles storage. Am I calling the right place? Yes, you've reached three mile storage management. How can I assist you today? I'm interested in a self storage facility and I was hoping you could help me out. Absolutely, I'd be happy to help. Uh, could you let me know what specific information you're looking for? For instance, are you interested in the sizes of available units, units, the security features, pricing or something else? Yes, I'm interested in what I can store, and um, I have a lot of stuff. I have a refrigerator, and I have a bunch of other items, and I just wanted to see what kind of unit I need to get. Great. For storing a variety of items, including large appliances like a refrigerator, you'll likely need a larger unit. Our units suitable for such items typically start at 10 by 10 feet, which offers ample space for a refrigerator along with other household goods. Additionally, all our units are climate controlled to ensure your items are protected from temperature fluctuations, which is particularly important for appliances and electronics. Uh, would you like more information on the availability of these units or perhaps some guidance on oh, wait, how to that's your Spanish storage? though? Necesito más información. Podemos ofrecerte varias opciones dependiendo de tus necesidades. Uh, si tienes un refrigerador y otros artículos grandes, un espacio de 10 por 15 pies o incluso 10 por 20 pies podría ser adecuado. Estos tamaños te permitirán almacenar cómodamente varios artículos grandes y cajas adicionales. También te proporcionaremos asesoramiento sobre cómo almacenar tus artículos de manera segura y eficiente para maximizar el espacio y proteger tus pertenencias. ¿Te gustaría saber sobre nuestros precios o disponibilidad actual para estas unidades? It's pretty good. I especially like the accent. I thought that was pretty well done. Now, if we're going to say hire a customer service representative, we might have to pay an hourly, an hourly or annual salary. Now for $10,000, we literally could build customer service responsive chatbots that could talk in text. We could also do add-ons that make it talk in voice. And we could even make it so that even if they just respond to an email or respond to a social media post with a comment or a blog, that it integrates the communication with text messages, emails, direct messages, social media post directions, and any kind of interaction. And we can even integrate it with your own custom data, with your own prompts, so that it's brought to respond in a very specific way. It could do so. And if it can't answer the question, it'll, it'll say, hey, we can't answer the question. But so let's um, 
have is forwarded to a human representative. So we have transparency. They're talking to an AI because they might not know that they're talking to an AI. This is what it looks like using something called Zapier. Now, Zapier here, you can literally type into a sheet some information that is analyzed by ChatGPT, kind of like a conversation, and it updates information. You could literally say, what is the capital of Utah? And, and it'll have the answer in the next row or write whatever cell you tell it to be. You have that email or that um, an email sent to somebody who asked the question. So, for example, let's say that I have data and it's going through a submission form. The data goes to a Google Sheet. It's, then an email was responded back to that person. That person also maybe get a phone call. They could talk to someone that probably is an AI, or they could even also get an integrated text message that also links to different things and upsells them. We also do N8N, which allows us to do all of the above on your own servers with your own data, which increases the rapid response and lowers the lag time between some of the responses that we're talking about and also protects your data. This is especially useful for secure industries like when we work with healthcare, government, and financial services businesses. Now, another option is what if I just wanted myself to be a streaming AI avatar? I could put this on your website. For example, they say that Dalai Lama, very real in this case, we're actually building one of these for the Dalai Lama. You talk to it and it knows all the information that the Dalai Lama has. So I can literally go to all of his videos and use a service like Descript or I could use v.io, I could transcribe everything, and then I could just upload it as data into a knowledge base. You can see here we have a knowledge base of what I might know. So here I'm asking my AI avatar, tell me about real AI dynamics, and it can answer the question. So it says some information about what real AI dynamics is, and it can even say it out loud. So here real it goes. AI dynamics is a program designed to teach individuals how to use AI for business occasions and increase productivity without the need for extensive coding knowledge. And it could go back and forth and I could talk to it. I could also remove the chat bot with other stuff, and other tools if I want to, but I do like the chat bot experience. It makes things a little bit more accurate. I could also share this. I can embed it on my website. I've literally done this. And the Dalai Lama could do the same thing. And another tool that we could use is even doing this during our Zoom meetings. So I use an assist, assistant, an AI assistant called fireflies.ai for every single meeting in my company. There's not a single time because that's not happening because it connects, connects to Google Calendar. Everyone's Google Calendar is connected to my Fireflies account. It gives me an overview of what was talked about, who talked about what, and their literal transcription accurately seeing what was happening, what, what questions, how many questions were asked, what how many tasks were assigned, what's the follow-up, and I have the video. I have the thread. I even have something called sentiment analysis, which is this person's mood was positive 24% of the time. This person's new mood was neutral 71% of the time. This person's mood was negative 4% of the time. That's very interesting. And this is, this is an amazing tool. And then we can do the same thing for any video, not just on Zoom. We do just integrate this with any kind of service of all kinds with Fireflies and many other services. Honestly, if you looked up almost anything plus AI, blueprint creation, architectural design, geospatial imaging, healthcare, plus AI, you'll find solutions for all those kinds of things. You just need to have a guide to help you guide through the process, or you need to hire somebody who's an AI expert, help you filter out through all the things that aren't working, because there's so much out there. And then find the tools that are working for you and then use them all the time because they are so useful. In the future, robotics is gonna be in your way. For example, here is a robot powered by ChatGPT. Now in the same way, it can answer questions. It can also do movements based upon what it expects you on how it, you should move its body. And this is all AI powered. And you can even copy your body movements from cooking, cleaning, lifting. If you have a source management company, grabbing things. Elon Musk expects that he's going to be able to sell Optimus for 20 grand. This, I don't know, might be cheaper. This, this is something that I've seen in real life. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. 
Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. So how do you think you did? I think I did pretty well. Now, I know when people see this, they're like, ah, that's so scary. There's going to be robots everywhere, just like the movies. And the uh, AI overlords are going to take over. But the computational power for AI actually not just be a prediction tool does not exist on this planet at the present moment. I mean, Google and other companies have said they're going to try to build a billion dollar um, uh, sort of processing units that and chips that could process things and make things faster. But the, all this technology, honestly, has existed for decades, like 30, 40, 50 years. And the only reason why it hasn't been got, gotten to this point is because we haven't had chips, graphics, graphic processing units, and, and just computational power to make this actually happen. So a lot of people are looking at this they're like, whoa, where did this come from? How did like in like a year all this happen. You know, this, this technology has been around for a long time, just that now we have the power to actually power what we created. Uh, my father actually wrote the first article on AI in like the 1960s. Devin is the world's first AI software engineer. This is really interesting. It's using something called autonomics, where you actually have AI models that communicate with other AI models. They debug programs and software and they optimize everything. In fact, I built something called an enterprise resource program for my previous company, taking 20 years or over a million dollars and we rebuilt the same thing for a few hundred dollars, just using something called GitHub Copilot where you just approve code and we took the code from an old code called ASP and we turned it into something called PHP, which is more modern. And that took three months and part-time. And now Devin's claiming to do everything even faster right in front of you and even finding code libraries and open source code where everyone could use it for free and integrating it so you could create your software for whatever you want to optimize. Because I know all of you have storage companies which you're probably now thinking creatively about how there's all sorts of other ideas in your head that might be I guess, horizontal integration to your already existing business or vertical integration to your already existing business and all sorts of other things. Another thing that exists is Rabbit One. Yeah, these aren't everywhere yet. There's only 10,000 of them, but this is something that could clip to your pocket, half the size of your iPhone. It can talk to you, answer questions, do all sorts of I'm things. I'm taking an early look at the Rabbit R1, and this tiny device doesn't have any apps on it, but it runs on AI. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of the device. So as you can see, there's a tiny 2.8 inch screen on the front. And then this is a scroll wheel right here. So as it presents answers or you're looking through the operating system, you can use that scroll wheel to, to kind of scroll through. And then on the side, you have a push to talk button that you can use to invoke the um, rabbit assistant when you want to ask a question. Play Antihero by Taylor Swift. Sure thing. Let's get the music playing for you. I've only had a few minutes to check it out, but so far I'm really loving the design. It feels very retro and it's super tiny. It's about half the size of my phone. What are some ideas for a five-year-old's birthday party? You could consider a superhero extravaganza, a princess tea party, or even a magical circus adventure. Another option could be a fun-filled outdoor party with games, a bouncy castle, and a treasure hunt. But well, we really need to spend more time with it before we can really tell how useful it is and, and how it kind of stacks up to the virtual assistants that already live on our smartphones. How old is Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt was born on December 18, 1963, which makes him 60 years old as of January 10, 2024. So once again, this is the Rabbit R1. It's going to cost $199 when it launches later this year. Don't forget to check out CNET for more coverage. Pretty amazing. Even more amazing is for just like a hundred dollars more, you could get one of these, which does language translation. When you look at an item, 
visually recognizes it, you can analyze nutritional value of the food that you're eating while you eat it. You can have it record what you eat, you don't eat. You can analyze on the internet different items and do price comparison at the grocery store or other stores. And this is something you just wear. And there's so many other competitors that are doing something similar, like Lucid, Meta, Glass, Smart Glasses by Ray-Ban, and many, many others. I want to show you one of my favorites, which is the AI pin. Isn't life about what we experience, what we smell? Can I eat this? Yes, dragon fruits are low in sugar. What we hear? Hey, what should I get here? What's that really good in Shimon? What we see? Oh. Capture this. <laughs> and what we feel? What if we build more memories? What are some fun things to do nearby? Share more moments. Can we play songs from the last time we were here? <laughs> what would happen if we rediscover our senses? What if devices went the experience? Catch me up. Lucy called and her flight is at 7 a.m. Tell Lucy I'm on my way. What if life was? Now, AI pin. The cool thing about this is that it does a lot of awesome things, but it is expensive. It's twice as much as the glasses, $600, plus a $20 per month subscription, it might be even $24 a month to T-Mobile, but still cheaper than your iPhone. Remove screen time for people who are addicted to screen time. I think that's great. And there's a lot of ways that we're promoting the greater good with AI. So some of the things are sustainability practices, optimizing resources on earth and promoting good stewardship of earth, engaging your community, and being corporate, corporate, having corporate responsibility in your business, and also allocating resources that are necessary for people in need. A very specific example is how Google gave research for free to the entire world of all proteins, mapping out every protein. And they were told that this research would have taken scientists 5 billion years to do, and AI did it for them instantly. You could also do accurate predictions now of floodings in over 80 countries up to a week in advance to help save homes and valuables, protect families. In Africa, we're creating treatments for very strange diseases that nobody is investing money on to help medical centers find solutions using AI. All very great. And one of my favorite things is if you have elderly parents that have difficulty hiking or walking, or you want to climb very difficult places and carry very difficult objects, like when I was last year hiking Everest and going to base camp, I had some difficulty. And this is a solution using AI with some minor robotics involved. Wilderness is not a luxury, it's in our veins. For when everyday adventures lead to unexpected experiences, HyperShack has the power and technology that takes you there. The M1 Bionic Motor can offset up to 30 kilos of weight. Feel light and agile like never before during hiking, running, and mountaineering. Gain extra horsepower in hypermuff, even at your best pace. Move fast, break records, make a history of your own. Don't drive it, live in it. HyperShad extends your body with 14 high-precision sensors that capture your intention and step in with zero delay. The full alloy frame and weatherproof design make HyperShell incredibly light and sturdy. HyperShell can be easily folded and stuffed into almost any backpack. The high-density batteries will take you there and back again, extend 16 miles range for single-day use, and rest assured even in multi-day trips, Easily move through the day with a motion engine that adapts to 12 miles per hour pace and 60 degrees climb with 10 additional joints. Life short, step further with Hypershell. Now, one of the things I think was cool about this, when I saw a demo of this, I was okay. super impressed. 
because huh. the person that was using this said it was kind of like just moving their knees very slightly and their full leg was able to extend as and they described it as bionic legs which for me was amazing because i always used to say to my family i would love to be able to have bionic legs so i could travel and see <laughs> beautiful things on mountains that i just couldn't physically climb myself because i wasn't in shape at the time um, I think that's truly great. The last AI tool I wanted to talk about was integration of leadership. It's really important that you have continuous learning and that you stay involved with all the latest developments and consider things from an ethical perspective. You also need to be transparent in your communication because there's a lot of tools, especially in marketing, that if it's not transparent, people might, might not know AI was involved or not involved. And the reason why I want to let people know that is because you need to know that there's nuances that can't be answered by AI. AI does not have um, a sense of moral values or promotion of ethical behavior. And you oftentimes need to train your AI models to make sure that it's aligned to your company values and policies and practices. And I'm gonna go into some very specific queer use cases of why I'm talking about that. First of all, let's talk about my favorite LinkedIn. It's AI inspiration, where I show very beautiful pictures. This is all generated with AI. And here's also a quick video of things generated with something called Midjourney, midjourney.com. You connect it to a Discord chat app, kind of like ChatGPT's chat bot. You can say forward slash imagine plus anything, and it'll produce anything you want. So that's Jesus in Times Square. Similarly, you can go to quipdrop.co, and you can use something called stable diffusion technologies, which generates a bunch of noise around the image to make it rapidly appear after it cleans everything up. So literally every single word I'm typing, it literally is changing the image in real time as opposed to mid journey where you might have to wait a few minutes for the outcome to appear. Like we had to wait a few seconds actually, but <laughs> you know, this is the outcome. You can have four different variations and you can even upscale the image that you want. You could also use AI though, not just make the images, you also make a plan and connect the plan to your images. So here we're seeing your seasoned business strategist and we want you to help us develop a plan for our, our Park City, Utah vacation travel business. And we also want you to develop a logo for this travel business and a welcome kit for this travel business. And we're gonna create a promotion for this travel business with a website, a PowerPoint, a PDF, a white paper that we can email to people. And we're doing it all at the exact same time. We're choosing the layout and it's generating from the theme that we chose. We could see if you go back to this, the site is being created. It's creating explore now. You can click on learn more. You could go to different pages. You can even link to other websites and web pages you already have. If you're just sending this with an email newsletter or a text message campaign, and you're saying this to people on recent updates, you even personalize this. You can literally integrate this in tools like Entreport or other tools where they have personalized emails, your CRM, Salesforce, and you can literally integrate that. In fact, we build stuff like this for people. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty amazing how fast you can do this. You also learn how to do this on your own. We actually show people how to do this, but... If you just go to gamma.app or you're following along on the slides and the workshop materials, I literally give you um, the links of all, all these tools in there so you can play with it yourself for fun and you get the free trial. Of course, I pay for the most expensive versions of all these tools because I use them so often. And now we're gonna say, hey, let's create an image for this welcome kit that we designed. So create a personal concierge card, personal um, toiletries, welcome letter, gourmet treats, contact card, customize our itinerary. You know, we're going to develop that into an image. We even make it into an image that we could potentially print. Look, this is pretty cool. AI has gotten images for us from our place, Park City, Utah, and they're very pretty images. Um, we can also see here that we're, we're waiting. So I'm going to show you some more of this presentation. You can see the quality of it is very good. It's solid facts. It fact checks what's going on with multiple sites, not just one. And uh, there's also a verification service where you have algorithms that will analyze statistically whether something is accurate or not. That's a beautiful welcome kit. It has some food and beverage gifts. It has some booklets. It has various items, itineraries, guidebooks, treats, 
welcome letter for VIPs. This is a very great service. Um, it, it, honestly, even just the picture itself is a nice gift that you can text people and say, hey, wish I could create this for you. Not going to give it to you for your your storage facility yet because <laughs> you, know, you don't only pay me this much money, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> anyway, let's say you didn't like that image. You want to edit it. Well, I could edit it without any back and forth. I do not like going back and forth with marketers that can't read what's on my mind. Why don't I just do it myself by touching it with my finger or my mouse and saying the text, change the image. I don't be firefight, it's just that. Fact chat you can do that now as of this week. So a lot of different kinds of tools and ways you could mix with your marketing creative. So I'm going to go in slow motion about some of those things. But before I do that, this is going to be launched this summer. ChatGPT 5, Sora. This also already has some competitors, but I'm literally seeing a video that was created with a text message in ChatGPT where you literally just text into existence. And of course, obviously it already exists because we're watching a video of someone who's using it, but it's right now only available to certain AI enthusiasts that are using it right now. Quality is great. Now imagine what's possible to make your commercials look like this. One minute at a time, two minutes at a time, or maybe even longer. I don't know the exact output, but I believe in the future, it'll probably just as easy to create a feature film by giving it a step-by-step -step prompt in ChatGPT and then putting that prompt into um, a movie request, say, hey, create a film based upon this. Now, the quality of this is quite phenomenal. I think this is actually better than most trailers of almost any feature film I've seen. If I had the music on, you'd also see that ChatGPT has music technology. In fact, they filed with the US Patent and Trademark Office all sorts of music technology and video technology that hasn't been released yet, even for ChatGPT, six, seven, and eight, they usually do an update once a year. And you could really customize it any way you want, personalize it with your own face, your own name, your own colors. And I think the possibilities are endless. Emmy Award winner, winning directors are already on this, but soon you'll have the capability as well. Plus, you could even take your static images, even today, just on one way ML and animate them. <laughs> And if I create an image in DALI 3 technology, um, which is basically ChatGPT 4, I can say, hey, make an image like this image, which was created right in it. And I get to go to Runway and I get to say, hey, I want to expand the image. Let's also center the image, add a bunch of trees and stuff like that. And that's what you have on my LinkedIn page right now. Also, if you take some images that you generate, it might be blurry if you make it larger. 
So what do you do? You put it in a runway ML and say upscale the image. Of course, Adobe can do the same thing. And here's me doing a really kind of, you know, cheesy dance video that I actually choreographed with ChatGPT. And on my left is my bishop. And I turned him into a robot using software called Wonder Dynamics. And Wonder Dynamics is great, but you could also enter any other person into any other movie. I've seen people do this for like Marvel characters where you take a robot and turn it into that, or you could take yourself and you could put yourself in your favorite sports game. So on the right, we're going to see this being done with the NBA. Imagine watching sports games where you and your friends are actually your favorite characters. I'm going to say it backwards. <laughs> That'll be the end of it. All right, smile for a second. All right, 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 all right. I'm back up. And so look, we've inserted you in the avatar selection. And then you see where the red is going. You could choose different players. Yeah. <laughs> There's that shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Where, where do you get the idea to stick your tongue out like that? Please? Somebody copied me, you know. It's like you've been lifting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. That was incredible. So, wow. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. That looks fun. Actually, I might have to watch sports from now on. Now, I asked Joanna to speak for two minutes. Okay. I have this gorgeous picture. The picture is a family picture of my family of eight little kids. Now, she, she spoke at my event. I got her permission to do this. Uh, you always have to get permission from Hey Jindo, verify it. You can't just uh, do this without permission because there's all sorts of things that have to get done for using someone's like, like and stuff like that, especially if they're not public figures. But I turned her into an AI. Hello, my name is AI Joanne, and I'm super excited to be part of this amazing event. I really hope everyone is having a great time, learning a lot, and making some epic connections. I love all things marketing, and I've learned a lot over the last few years. But I have a feeling this year is going to be an amazing year. All of us are going to have such an epic year. I just know it. I believe it, and I hope you do too. Amazing. This is something that you can do to increase your social media output. If you just have marketers you trust taking you, if you were wanting to be a personal brand, this could really spread things out. But I can even translate this in any Hola, language. Hola, mi nombre es AI Joan. Y estoy muy emocionada. De now, not only can I do that, I could even do that now with AI for websites. Historically, Google Translate had an 85% accuracy. Let's Chat allows me to have 100% accuracy with AI. But I can literally take my iPhone and record me with three different camera angles, upload it into HeyGen with text generated from ChatGPT and AI generated music and literally produce a video sales letter for my website with three camera angles. Today, I appear before you, not just as an entrepreneur or a CEO, but as an advocate for transformation, a guide to unlocking a future where your business not only adapts, but thrives in the ever evolving landscape of artificial intelligence, where you can use AI to massively increase your productivity and use AI assistance to accomplish anything. In fact, I am the AI avatar for Nikki Co the founder of Real AI Dynamics. I've done this in loud beaches in Africa and still gotten the same results. I could also go to Suno and Suno allows me to literally generate music with this very simple prompt, fast tempo rock and roll song with male voice for podcast, self storage show hosted by Jim Ross, owner of self storage property management company, three mile storage management. Jim's innovative. And then you click the create button and notice that's creating two different songs. I could create more. I can make the songs as long as I want. I could change the type of music, but they all take up different kinds of credits. I have generated so many, so many different music of all kinds. But here I've just created a fast tempo rock and roll song to show what's possible here. And it's a sing along. So feel free to sing along. <laughs> Working the 
We got the new theme song for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. I didn't know that you did that. It was sweet. Go so some time. Okay, great. Yeah. So another thing you could do, let's say you have sales copy in your website. I could literally use Mintbird and just click one button, and I could reword everything on your website, and optimize the sales copy. I could also change the text size, format, layout, and integrate with anything else, and even create chatbots and just literally put it on your site with just clicks of a button without any code whatsoever. We also offer boot camps. We have two boot camps coming up. If you're interested in going to realedgenamics.com forward slash boot camp, you go to the same program. This is a picture of Jim at our boot camp here in Salt Lake City. It's a four to one ratio. We have hot seats where we go to your company. We'll talk to your entire company about AI and create customized solutions for your business, train everyone on how to do everything we're talking about. And we have digital video courses for people that don't want us to travel to you, want to do some of the comfort of your home. We have programs. You can go to realiadynamics.com and register. The content's actually, as of now, it's uh, April of 2024, still being edited. But if you bought, want to buy the product right now, we'll actually bonus you with an extra 20 hours for content. Plus, we have chatbots of all kinds. You could do like 3,000 hour chatbots, 10,000 hours, or like high quality chatbots. You could talk to you and do automations of all kinds. And we even have a gift for you. So, anyone who wants to follow up, you get three hours of AI professional certificate program. This is available for you um, as a gift. Um, it is the same program where I met Jim, Utah Tech Week, three hour workshop. And at the end of it, you'll get a professional certificate in AI from an accredited university created by the founder of the John Institute, Aditya Paul Berlia. And at, of course, there's always follow up. So if you are interested in staying in touch with me and our community, and including Jim and other people, Go to this uh, WhatsApp. It's a, basically an a app you can download on your phone, and you can get up to date on all sorts of really cool things in AI Raider Nation. Email me. Check me on LinkedIn. And I appreciate the time for uh, Jim to uh, bring me on here. So I'm going to bring Jim back into the room, but thank you so much for your time. That was – okay. My mind's blown. That was awesome. Let's stop sharing this here. All right, we're good. Okay. No, I had no idea you were personalize it that much for storage and my stuff. So yeah, of course. Oh, that was that was great. So again, covered a lot of territory. Oh my gosh, those two hours like <laughs> flew by very fast. And yeah, I'm sure your mind's a little overloaded with a lot of stuff there, but I'll make sure for everybody that we got those resources. I'll be sending it out to you as long as you're registered. I got your email. I'll also that out to you. Take advantage of his stuff as well, for sure. Some of the education, the tools he has. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And the fact that, again, thank you so much for taking the time and doing this. Yeah, I mean, you're part of the business guy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'll, I'll swing by on my way to the airport. It means a lot. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm into Silicon Valley tonight. Hey, really? Yeah, going to uh, the tech startup house of the founders of Google. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tell him I said hi. Why not? Uh, that's amazing. All right, guys, again, thanks for those that have stayed on for the entire time. That's awesome. Uh, I'll also be sending out a recording in this as well for everybody because it's one of those things you want to kind of go over a few times because we kind of a lot of territory. So, again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thanks, Nikki. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Bye.